Someone asked a really good question yesterday. And so I'm going to, one more AI, one more, one more, one more, one more. We'll get back to games in a sec. But the question was, is why do these billion dollar companies, the first problem they solve is writing an art. Why don't they solve real hard problems? Why aren't they solving? Why aren't they doing my taxes for me? Well, because how they approach writing an art isn't a yes or no, right or wrong answer, right? Art is subjective. Here is Jackson Pollock. This art, art speaks to me. He's one of my favorite artists. Um, the first time I saw him in a museum, I was first amazed by how large the piece was. And then I just kind of sat there soaking it all in. Uh, it talks to me in a lot of different ways. Now, art is just form and color. And this, I respond to it. Now, you can say, hey, this is just junk and it says nothing to you and you don't like it. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine, right? But you have a reaction to it. You have a connection to it. Uh, for me, this one does, right? Now, in in art world, uh, is every single Jackson Pollock as good as the others? No, there's some I like better than others, right? It's, again, it's form and color. You may say, hey, I like pastoral paintings. And like, you want to say, hey, look, here's a Monet Mon Mon that I really enjoy. That's cool. We can all have different feelings on this art, but it's all subjective. There is no tight right or wrong answer. There is a right or wrong answer if you get your taxes wrong, right? And so AI, mm, no, computers can help because it's processing forms and data and sure. But generative AI, and that's what the AI I'm talking about today, generative AI that we're talking about based on large language models is like really bad at things like math because math are concrete yes or no. It can't fudge. It can't lie. It can't make stuff up in math. Two plus two is four. But make a money, but on the moon, yeah, yeah, right? And if you notice tech bros, uh, aren't ever talking about the quality of the art. Does the art move them? Do they connect to the art? Do they have a feeling when they see this? What they say is, hey, that's got six fingers on it. It sucks, right? Like that's their ability to talk about art. And yeah, we'll fix the six finger problem. We're not going to fix that it doesn't speak to his art. And the same with writing. It won't feel it right. It doesn't, and it doesn't, you know. I can almost always tell because you're like, oh, nobody puts in that much. Oh my God, that many adjectives and yet no punctuation, right? And yeah, well, will it fix that? Sure. But it won't have that feeling. It won't say anything interesting. It won't say something that connects to you, right? And the same with the movies that are coming out right now. Right? You're like, oh, wait, she walks. Woo! Wow, that's art. No, it's not. And it's not going to be, right? But they use this to sell it because the reality is they're selling smoke and mirrors. It's lies. It's fabricated BS and they can't show you it's solving hard concrete problems because it can't what it can do is answer subjective things and give you things that you go yeah maybe i don't know sure scooby-doo on the moon yeah i'm putting everything on the moon i don't know whatever but you know what i'm saying right but it's a lie right it's just mimicry but so then you're like well someone posted my comments as well which by the way Hey, good job in the comments, man. I really like both YouTube and TikTok. I've really had some good discussions. Uh, and that comes from humans. Uh, but I have a small account, right? I don't have a big account. I don't have 100,000 plus people. And that's partially because I don't speak in singular truths, right? I think things are way more complex normally, except AI is a scam. Uh, but... Uh, and so we have a conversation more often where I want to learn from you as well, right? And that has been really productive for me. Hopefully it's been good for you. But that gen ten generally tends to not create big giant accounts because big giant accounts want to be like, you should hate that and you should. So here, I guess this is my play for big giant account then. I don't know, because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go against that and tell you what you should hate. I don't know. But right, but that's 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 the kind of account I have. But then someone was linking to um, like an account by David Shapiro, who's an AI expert. He's not. Uh, but so he has this bet. He has this. He has this. He has this thing that he says we're going to have general AI by September of this year. Let's ignore that we don't have self-driving after seven years of promise of it, and Elon Musk's secret super AI computer or whatever, whatever. Ah. Uh, so David Shapiro, first, I'm going to talk for about 30 seconds. You should listen to this and then probably not listen to the rest. Uh, I'll bet you $1,000 
a thousand dollars, you we can we can put it in. We will not have general AI um, by September. I will bet you a thousand dollars. We can put it in escrow. This is a real bet. This is an honest to God, real proposition to you. We can you can donate the money to charity so it's not like worrying about enriching each other. We can even, I'll even pay you two to one or whatever odds you need because you're never gonna have general AI by September. Um, but you can donate to Seattle, Seattle Animal Shelter um, and I, I'll donate to whatever dumb AI charity you believe in. I don't know. All right, because we're not gonna have general AI by September. We're not because all of this is smoke and mirrors. Right now, he, people will make up what that means, the general AI, oh, 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 we're not, right? But he also has said something else. And he said, it's immoral to be hiring people because all jobs are gonna be replaced by AI. It's something to that effect. Um, so now why do people say those kind of things? Well, because you want clicks and you want money and you wanna get you know, your, your account famous, sure. But it's also because as humans, we respond to ghost stories, right? Nobody wants to sit around the ghost story and have the person explain taxes to them. They want to be, they want to or, sit around the ghost story, sit around the fire on a camping expedition, uh, talking about taxes. They want to be like, even though you're, even though you're outside of Cleveland where there's no bears, there's no snakes, there's nothing in the woods that are going to hurt you, right? You want to hear the ghost story about the bear that crawls out of the cave once every seven years from the metro parks and eats children right and like ooh, uh right we want to scare each other and that's what we react to and that's all his account is right all it is is telling ghost stories um and it's telling ghost stories to scare scare you but the problem is some people are being scared by that and you shouldn't be all jobs are not going to be replaced by ai i mean that's, that's such a crazy statement that it's almost hard to counter uh, it's just, well, will some jobs be displaced? Yeah, yeah, there's some data processing, some crunching of numbers things that we can probably look at in different ways. Is there some, yeah, like there's, there's, there, there is a way. There is a way that always has been. When computers came out in the 70s, we saw productivity skyrocket, but we also saw some people lose their jobs. There's not a pool of typists anymore for CEOs, right? I'm a CEO, I wish there was a pool of typists. That'd be awesome, right? But there's nobody taking notes like that anymore and copying that all down. We all have the tools to do that. So we've increased the productivity, right? But look at back in, back in the day when the loom came out and all of a sudden we can make a bunch more clothes. Do you think the people working like the tailors or whatever back then were like, hey, I'm only gonna work an hour a day and now I'm gonna sit on my ass and do nothing because this loom this is making all the clothes. We, we, my job's done. No, no, it's a tool. And what they did was like, we can make a bunch more clothes now. We can make more money, right? That's the same with the computers in the 70s. And that's gonna be the same with the AI here. AI, general AI is never going to happen. And it is a tool and it is a tool used. I use, I use AI, not generative AI, but I use AI um, when I make my bumpers for the YouTube videos, because it's a really easy way now to pull things off the background. I don't have to be really good at Photoshop anymore, right? It used to be Photoshop, used to be a skill. You'd go to FARC and you would post your great Photoshop. And now it's like easy to do that. It's meaningless, right? Because the tools got better. But so as AI's tools come on, it's not going to be like, well, hey, my work here is done. I'm going to sit on my ass. No, you're going to be like, okay, I can do a bunch more stuff now. I'm going to become more productive. I'm going to be able to explore more things. Look at games, for instance, right? So I've been playing around with the idea of what could you make if you just really limited yourself one person and said, I am just going to use all the tools at my availability, right? You can make some really interesting stuff now. You couldn't do this 20 years ago. So it doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop making games. It's gonna mean I can make games with fewer people and make bigger and more things, right? So that's what tools do to us. But people like David don't wanna call AI a tool. They wanna to call it a ghost story and they wanna scare you. And that is just a bunch of, I won't say it, but the AI could figure out what I'm gonna say, maybe, no. I guess I haven't seen if it uses profanity. <laughs>